here's where the first scan started. This white or this uh, circle here was where the scanner was, and that circle is underneath the scanner, so you don't see any data there. But you could see that it missed a few areas, right? We didn't get everything with one go. So then we did another scan, and that filled in a little bit more over here. And then we did another scan and so on and so forth until we got all the way around the, the stockpile and had everything captured and put together in one cohesive point cloud, which you see here. And the software was able to match all these scans together, almost like pieces of a puzzle, only fitting one way. So I put those together. I also used images, so I was able to capture color to go with this, which you see here. Now, it was kind of a dark, gloomy day when I did that. It was cloudy. It was getting to be evening time. So I'm just going to jump in here real quick and show that I can just bump up this brightness so it makes it a little bit easier to see what I'm doing here. It looks really good. Now, once I've got the data inside of Trimble RealWorks, which I'm showing you here, this is where we can go through and start to make things. So it was a really easy uh, transfer. I just exported it out of here to an external hard drive, plugged it into my computer, dragged and dropped it onto the RealWorks software, and away I go. So the next thing I want to do now is I want to make something out of this. I want to uh, get something productive out of this point cloud. So I'm going to do a volume calculation. So I just go up to surfaces here. And I'm going to go up to surfaces because I want to create a solid surface. There's a few things on here, like these cones. There's a couple of cones around here that I don't want included in the stockpile. So I'm going to cut those out, and it's going to create a hole in my point cloud. And when I do my volume, I don't want a hole there, so I'm going to create a surface. So I'm just going to select this under my surfaces, and then I'm going to go to Mesh Creation. And inside of the Mesh Creation tool, I'm just going to go in and quickly isolate just the stockpile that I want to work with. So this is called Segmentation. And from the Segmentation, I'm just going to view this from the top here. And I'm just going to pick along here, along this fence line, come around here, and keep this in. So I'm just getting my stockpile now. I'm just going to look at it from the side to make sure I didn't miss anything. And I'm going to increase the pixel sizes so I can see if there's any stray pixels floating around that I don't want on here. And in this case, everything looks pretty good. I made a nice clean, clean sweep in between that fence so I don't have anything hanging out over there. So now I've got that. And then I'm going to just sample this down. So there's a lot of points in here. Uh, you can see there's uh, several million. And I'm going to use something called spatial, uh, spatial sampling. And it's just going to reduce the amount of points as I create this surface. So in this case, I'm just going to set a resolution, uh, maybe three, 30 millimeters here. Do a quick preview. And I can see I've reduced the number of points down here to only 290,000. So this is going to be a lot more manageable. So I'm just going to click Apply. And all the tools in RealWorks are kind of wizard-driven. You start up at the top with step one and work your way down. The next thing I'm going to do is select a projection to create this surface. And in this case, I'm going to choose a plane base. And you can almost imagine dropping a towel or a blanket on top of this stockpile. And it's going to create this solid on top of all of these points that are floating around. So I'm just going to do a quick preview on this mesh and see what this looks like. And you can see down in the lower left is the progress bar. It's gone through. It's created the mesh. Now it's going through and reducing the amount of points on there because in step three I had set to uh, reduce the, uh, the size of the mesh. So that looks like a really good fit. Oh, I forgot to cut out the, um, the uh, cones. So I'm just going to go do that real quick because I told you I would. I'm just going to cut these out here. Look at that and make sure I didn't miss anything. That looks pretty good. Come down here and get rid of this one. Take that out. All right, so that's gone. And then we're just going to create that mesh one more time. And you see there's the hole in the point cloud, but as we create this mesh surface, it's going to go ahead and fill that in for us. And this just takes a few seconds here. OK. So that's looking good. It's filled that area in over here where the other cone was. It's done a nice job of filling that in as well. 
So it looks good. If I just hide the points, you can see there's the whole mesh itself. I'm just going to create that and then click close. Now if I want to go in and just look at that mesh, I'll make sure that it looks nice. You'll see there's a few stray areas here. These were some, uh, looks like some plants or something that were growing up in the gravel. So I'm just going to go in and do a little bit of editing on this mesh. And in the mesh edit tool, there's a lot of things I can do. I could reduce the size like we did in that other step. Uh, we can uh, fill holes if we need to. In this case, I want to get rid of that. So I'm just going to use this option, remove peaks. I'm just going to click that. And it's going to get rid of that area where there's just a few stray points from that plant that was growing. And then click apply. So that looks great. Now I just need to go in and create my volume. So while I'm still in this surfaces tool, I'm just going to come over here to volume calculation. And then I need to compare this mesh to something. Now, if I had scanned before the, the gravel was brought in, I could compare it to that surface. But in this case, I'm just going to create a flat plane at the base of this. Now, this is a sloped hill, so I'm not just going to create a, a horizontal plane, but I'm actually going to just pick three points around the base of this stockpile. Pick a couple there and pick my third one over here. All right, so that looks good. So now I'm going to compare the stockpile to that plane. And I'm just going to click on preview here. All right, so there I've got a great looking stockpile, about 594 cubic meters of material. Now I said, can also go in and click or create a, a report. So I'm just going to click on report, save as RTF. We'll just give this a name, uh, stockpile. A volume. All right, we'll click Save. And it's creating an RTF file. I can open that up inside of Microsoft Word. I'm just going to zoom in so we can see this a little bit better. I can go in and make edits on this. In this case, I'm just going to put my name up here. Um, I could spice it up a little bit. Maybe I want to go in um, and add some images. So you can see here there's cut, fill volumes, there's areas. Um, I'll do a screen snap. So in RealWorks, I have the capability to do a screen snap, but I'm also just going to use a Snagit, give them a quick promotion here because it's quick and easy. I've just done that quick screen snap, and I can scroll down here and put that in just to give a nice little uh, visual to this report. So that looks great. Zoom back out so you can see the whole report. So we've got all of the information. And of course, if we didn't want extra information in here, we could go through and get rid of some of this uh, general information just like that to make it look a little bit nicer and save that. In this case, uh, I'm done. So I'm just going to click close. It's going to ask if I want to create that. No, I've already got the, the, the report that I wanted. Now, a few more easy things that you could do. You may want to go in and just say, well, how big is this volume? We can bring up a measurement tool, and very quickly go in and click on one end, go down here to the other end, and we can see, oops, click on this end. Sorry, I had it set on the vertical. So I can see it's about 72 meters, so probably around 230 feet long. If I wanted to see how high this was, I could also do a constrained vertical measurement. So just click up here on the top, and then click anywhere here along the ground, and it's going to snap and let me know that that's about 2.2 meters high. So that's it. It's really quick and easy to go in and work with point clouds. Of course, in Trimble RealWorks, we have many other tools. You can go in and create models. Uh, you can create video animations. You can do comparisons and inspections to as-built versus uh, design. So there's a lot of things you can do with a point cloud. But just wanted to give you a quick example of what you could do today. So thank you so much for joining me. If you have any questions, just put them in the comments. I'll take a look at them later on and run through and answer those for you. Thanks again.